Okay, so today we're gonna do something called counting collections. Have you ever heard of counting collections, Lil? No. Okay, this is um, not a thing for a fifth grader, although it will still be fun. So can you put your head in the brain of like a kindergartner? Okay. Okay, so look at all my things. Wow. Don't they look fun? Yeah. Yes. Hey, what do you think you wanna do with those? I wanna sort them. Okay. Count them. You wanna, okay, well how would you sort them? Why don't you show us? So, first I would sort them by color. Yeah, go for it. Okay, you want to do it by color? What do you notice about your color groups? Um, they're all different colors. There are a lot of different okay. colors. Okay, what else do you notice? There are a lot of different shapes. Yeah. Is there a group that you think has the least? Um, like the smallest group, which is that? This one. What? The, the purple group? Yeah. What about the most? Can you tell without counting? Give a guess without counting. I'm gonna say it's either this one or that one. So either yellow or red. Blue looks kind of big to me too, but I'm not sure Blue, since I haven't red, counted. And yellow. Okay. So if you didn't sort them by color, how else could you sort them? By shape. What do you notice about these piles? There are a lot of different amounts of each pile. Can you tell right away which is the most? Yes. Yeah. Which one is that? Yeah. And I'm even gonna move these over. Oh yeah. Right? Look at that. How about the least? Can you tell which ones have the least? Mm -hmm. Okay. These. Those have the least? Okay. Any other ways you could think about sorting it? Uh, you could think about like uh, um, dimension. Like oh yeah. If it's like flat or 3D. Yeah, so in kindergarten they would call that solid. So these are solid. <laughs> And these are flat, even though they're not really flat, they're kind of flat-ish. So. Anything you notice about those groups? They're pretty much the same. Is it harder to tell which group is more? Yeah. Why do you think so? Um, there's some of these, I think they're about like the same size, but these are flat, so they take up more space. Oh, interesting. But these are more packed together, so I would say there are more of these, but okay. there looks to be the same amount. Sure, the space that they take up on the paper. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to record your counting collection and do some counting with it, how would you like to group it? Did, you did it by color, you did it by shape, and then you did it by um, flatness and 3D-ness. So which would you like to do? I would do reds. Like, you want to do it by color? Okay. So now if we were going to record a, like a picture of this, what would be a good, like a math pic, like how could we record this in a mathy kind of way? Second grader, what pairs of easy numbers do you see? I would see like two and eight. Because that makes ten. Nice. Okay, so we know that the black and the blue together make ten. Okay. Then I would see seven and three, mm -hmm. and that makes ten. Okay. And then I would see six and four. Okay. And that makes ten. Okay. And then you only have the one and the two left, so that nice. makes three. I love that way. So we could do it like that. We could also just keep counting, yeah? Like you talked about, one, two, three, four. We could keep going and see our total. Why don't you, um, why don't we show the way that you would do it? Because that's kind of an interesting way to do it. So could we maybe do some like circling of yeah. the tens? One thing we could do if we were in kindergarten because kindergartners are great at counting things, is we could put these all back on and we could count each one to make sure we really did have three, yeah? 33. I mean 33. <laughs> and we could even put them in groups of 10 like you did. So we could say This seems like a pretty fun thing to do with kindergartners and first graders. And even if you have some 4K kids at home, could we maybe make a list of things that you could put in a counting collection? So the 
these are counting collections. The big ideas are kids need to be able to manipulate objects and it makes it uh, gives them a meaningful reason to count and um, they can sort them in any kind of way. You can ask any kind of questions, but they should record their, their work, their collection, and they should record how they uh, counted it. Uh, this is great for one-to-one -one correspondence, and it's a lot of fun. So hope you try out counting collections today.